Hey folks, hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to take a look at how to do stepwise regression in Unit M, Multiple Linear Regression, using Excel. So I've made a copy here of our Stats 101 data, data set that we're familiar with. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is to get rid of all of the variables here which are not interval scale. So I'm going to get rid of section, gender, I'm going to keep age, get rid of eye color, smoking, personality. I'm going to keep math 30 and English 30. We'll get rid of the stats. We're going to keep the GPA. And I'll get rid of age class and movie ratings. And then I'm just going to move the GPO over to the left-hand side there. And that's actually going to be our Y variable. So we're going to look at what is it that determines the GPA of a student. And we'll look at three variables, the age, the math 30 mark, and the English 30 mark. So this is my Y variable. And then here are my X's here all together as a group. Now, I don't really need to keep the respondent column. Of course, you want to keep the respondent column initially because you want to sort by each variable and check to see if there's any missing values, any blanks, any spaces, and get rid of those particular rows because every row needs to have a GPA, an age, a math 30, and an English 30. Once I've done that, I can actually get rid of the respondent column. So I'm going to do that. And that leaves us with the variables that we need here. All right. Now, before we run the regression, I'm going to show you the correlation matrix. So we're going to go into data, data analysis, which again, you may need to add in. And in the analysis tool pack, we've got correlation here. Now, this is really simple. What you do, it looks like I've got this set up from before. The input range is just these guys right here. So it's your Y variable and all of your X's. It's a good idea to put your Y variable as your first column. And I'll show you why when we take a look at the correlation matrix. Tell it that you got labels, so make sure that this guy is clicked. And then you're going to choose an output range Looks like I've got F2 there. I think I'm going to take it over just a couple of more columns here. Go up to the top and I'm going to put it right about there. And say OK. And there we go. All right. Let me take these down to about three decimal places each just to make them a little cleaner. Now, we talked about uh, the correlation matrix in the lecture notes uh, where we talked about stepwise regression, regression and multicollinearity. So that's how you actually get the thing using Excel. And as we said there, these guys here are just the Pearson R's from unit C. So it's looking at this guy right here, which is 0 0.213, is the Pearson R, the correlation coefficient between age and GPA. And it shows the Pearson correlation between every pairing of variables. So when we take a look here at our, our Y variable, which is right here, right? We want to take a look at which variables are most important individually at explaining GPA. Which ones are of the of the three here are most important and they are the ones which are closest to plus or minus one remember it could be negative these are all positive but they could be negative but it's the magnitude of the number how far away it is from zero so in this particular case then math is the one with the highest correlation so it's the most important at explaining gpa and then we've got english and then we've got age. Now it looks like it took those yellow from over there. 
I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm going to label this that these are the, the Pearson R's. And this is the order of importance, or this is the the weight of each one, um, not the weight of each one, the importance of each one. So math has a, a very high correlation. Next is English, and then next is age. All right, let's run some regressions now. The way that the stepwise regression works is we start with a full model, that is GPA on all three variables. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the one with the highest P value and consequently the T star, which is closest to zero. So, and once again, you want to go back and take a look at the lecture notes video that talks about that. So in Excel, we're going to go into here, data, data analysis, I'm going to go to regression. I probably have a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff already filled in because I was working on some regressions just a few minutes ago. So my Y range is going to be over here. That's my, my GPA. So right there. A1 all the way down to A101. And then my X ranges will be B1 all the way down to D101. So this whole block of X variables. Tell it you got labels right here and the output range. So I'm going to change my output range here to just below the correlation matrix right there. And this is what I get. So here's my output. I'm just going to clean that up really quickly here. And take these down to about three decimal places. One, two, three, like that. These are actually integers, these guys. And I don't really need my confidence intervals. I'm going to get rid of those. So there we go. Okay. And then the last thing is I'm just going to change the size of the columns here. It. Now, let's take a look at what we've got here. Your squared value here, that's what you always start by looking at, is 38.8%. So that means that these three variables together, age, math, and English 30, math 30 and English 30, contribute almost 40% of the variation in explaining the GPA of a student. Together, of course, these are significant. When you take a look at the ANOVA test, we find that all three of them together are significant in explaining the GPA. And then when we take a look down here, we'll see the p-values. Now, what we've got here is we've got math 30, which is significant. And then at, at pretty well any level of alpha, age is uh, somewhere in that 5 to 10% p-value range. But I'm actually not interested in the low p-values. I'm interested in the high ones. So I'm going to back out of there. If I can. It's not allowing me to. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that coloring then. And this is the guy that I want to look at. So this is the variable English 30, which has the greatest p-value. And it has then, correspondingly, take a look at the T star values. It's the one which is closest to zero, to the middle of a T distribution. So it's the most insignificant variable in this model. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of it. So I'm going to get rid of the, the English 30 column. Just delete it like that. And I'm going to run the regression again. So data, data analysis, regression. Everything will be the same here, except that up here where it says the input range, instead of going from B to D, we'll now go from B to C. And then I'll choose a different output range. 
So we'll start instead of at H8, we'll do G29. Remember, I got rid of one column, that's why I'm moving over here. Let's see what we get. Okay. Clean this up a little bit. And I'll just get rid of these guys. I don't really need them. All right, let's read this. Now take a look here at the R squared. The R squared actually doesn't change much at all. It goes from 38.8% to 38.6%. So getting rid of English 30 actually had almost no effect here on the regression. ANOVA is still significant. P-value is 0. And now we take a look here then at these p-values down here. And you can see that Math 30 is still the most significant at zero. Age actually, it's interesting, it, it hasn't changed much, but it went from 0 .00, 0 0.077 to a little better, 0 0.068. And so that's not really indicating that there's a multicollinearity problem, but it means that there was some correlation between English 30 and age. If we go back up to the correlation matrix, we would see it right here. So English 30 and age, it was about 0.137. Fairly low, but it's uh, enough that when you get rid of English 30, age actually increases a little in significance. Okay, now in this particular step, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the most useless variable that's left, and that is going to be age. That's the one that contributes the least. And so let's get rid of age over here. I'm going to delete it. Now we're left with just GPA and math 30. Let's run a quick regression here. Like so. Uh, over here with the X range, instead of going from B to C, we go from B to B. And then my output range is going to be F49 here. Not sure why I'm getting that alert there. It's been doing that for the last few days. But it still seems to run. Okay, and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit here. And what do we got? Here's your R squared value. So it drops a little bit here. It drops from 38.6% to 36.4%. So that age variable contributed about 2% to the whole model here. On top of that already explained here by Math30, which alone accounts for 36.4% of the variability in GPA. And, of course, we're still left with a, a significant model here. Right? And you can see these p-values there. They're significant. So that's how we run the, the stepwise regression. What you do is at each step you get rid of the variable which is contributing the least to the model. The one with the highest p-value which corresponds to really the, the T star, which is closest to zero. You never get rid of the intercept. All right, that's not something that we do. Um, there's specialized kind of regression where you can force the intercept to zero, but that's not something that we're considering. What's interesting, though, is see, let's just make a new column here, which is the stepwise column. And that is working up from the bottom up, Math was the one that was left, so it's the most important. But then the age actually was the second most important. And then third was, was English 30. 
So English 30 was the one that was knocked out first. So what you have here is an interesting thing, and that is that English 30 actually drops in significance or in, in effect in the model. If we were to take a look at just the Pearson R's, it's actually higher than age, but it actually leaves the model earlier. Why? Well, here's your problem right here. It's a multicollinearity problem. That's a pretty high correlation between Math 30 and English 30. And so the English 30 is not contributing much to explaining the GPA on top of that already explained by Math 30. It's highly correlated. And when we took it out, we saw that the R squared dropped very little. 38.8% down to 38.6%. And so this insignificant English 30 is a multicollinearity problem. If we were to, and you'll have to take my word for this, but if we were to run separate regressions of GPA on age, GPA on math 30, and GPA on English 30, you'd actually find that all three of them turn out to be significant variables at explaining the GPA but put them together and Math 30 drops in significance to a very high p-value. Uh, and even age drops into that 5 to 10 percent range. So it's still got some correlation here. Right? Here's age with its correlation between Math 30 and English 30. But here's your real culprit why English 30 takes such a dive here. So that's what we do. If we were to look at the best model we would look at what's the, the best model that describes GPA. And it's where, if we were to go any further, our R square would drop considerably. In our particular case, then, um, getting rid of English 30 only drops the R squared by a little bit, 0 0.002. We might consider keeping in age. It had a, a significance here just over 5%, so it's in the 6 to, it's in the uh, 5 to 10% region. And uh, so we might consider that, have to ask ourselves, is that 2% worth it or not here? And if we're looking at 5% level significance, we could actually get rid of that. The R squared doesn't drop much, and then what we're left with is just Math 30, which is a really simple model for describing the GPA of a student. And so that's how we look at multicollinearity and how you fix it with a stepwise regression. And that is where I want to leave it today. That ends the lesson. Thanks for tuning in.